your expectations are on this year? For this year, yeah. Uh, same expectations, um, the same ones we had last year. Um, the bottom line is we're trying to win a state championship. Um, you know, that's that's our expectation year in and year out. Um, and so, you know, last year I thought it was really, really cool going into this year because we were really close. And so I think that the kids understand that, you know, this isn't an expectation that's um, unable to be done. I think they see that if they put in the work enough and do the things that, that, that they need to do from a, from a leadership standpoint and from a, from a team standpoint, uh, a team building standpoint, they can do that. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's still the expectation is to, to go to Chattanooga and get a gold ball for sure. And I also think it was really special, not just for Clallan, but for Hampton and all the Carter County teams that actually went to the state. Oh yeah, for sure. I think that, you know, I think there's a good brand of football in Carter County. You know, Elizabethan does really good. Sean Witten, um, their offensive line uh, coach, Devin Whitehead, man, they got some really, really good coaches. And at Hampton, you know, their success speaks for themselves. You know, Michael Lunsford is great. Um, he's developed a competitive greatness there at Hampton. And, man, they're, every year, it doesn't matter if Hampton loses, you know, 25 players or if they lose one player, they're going to be good the next year. And that's just, they're really good coaches. Um, so I think that has a lot to do with it for sure. Let's talk a little bit about your own line. What, what, what do you think are the expectations with them coming in from last year? Um, being consistently good, I think that, you know, last year we had a lot of good team leaders um, and they naturally kind of individually were good just on their own. Didn't really have to be really yelled at it into them. You said, guys, listen, we have to do this. We have to do it consistently and perfect. And OK, coach, let's do it. Um, but again, you know, we had a lot of seniors, man, uh, on the line and backfield. And so you ask that and they can naturally do it quick. Um, and with this group, you know, they're a little bit younger. Uh, and, you know, being good for five plays is awesome, and I love it. But now that gets you to a first or second round, and then you're getting beat. Trying to be good even when you get tired, or if one thing happens, bouncing back the next play and not, not letting that take you six plays before you can bounce back, um, there's something we're focused on for sure. But, uh, but yeah. Now, let's talk about your back seven. Yeah, defensive, uh, back safeties, yeah. stuff like that. What what do you think their strong points and what they are capable of doing this year? Well, the main strong point um, as far as individually is Gage. Gage is a coach on the field. And one thing that Coach Bowen is really, really good at doing is coaching the players in a way to where it allows them to understand how to coach it on the field. That makes sense. He's really good at that. Um, and Gage McKinney's been, play, he's been playing DB for the last four years, especially for three years. He's a stud and he's... He's getting out of where he can coach it with other kids. Um, but, you know, our main thing with the DBs is I think that they learn pretty good. Um, we have a lot of speed, not a lot of height besides Gage, but they're tough. And I think that's a strong point. If somebody comes up and they need to run stop, they're going to run stop really, really good. So I think that's a good thing. So your, your main thing you're saying with the defensive players and stuff like that, they got a lot of heart and soul. Oh, thing. for sure, for sure. But now I think that that's – I think the heart and the soul is that's ingrained at a young age, man. Like it's not like that we come out here and we do Oklahoma for three hours and ingrain that in them. It's kind of the it's the community that we live in, man. Like from the time that they're in first grade until they get to be a ninth grader, it's ingrained that you know we're going to be tough. And they see all the other, you know the other ten players on the field being tough. You don't want to be that one player that's not being tough. And so I think it's a lot of that's ingrained at an early age for sure. Um. Talk about some players. Cam Peppers. What can you say about Cam? Cam is a young kid, um, but he's a true winner. And I noticed it last year. Uh, I forgot who we were playing. Um, it, it was in the playoffs. I think it was Oakdale, and it was his first time starting. Most kids, as a freshman, when it's their first time starting, you know, they're nervous, they're crying, they're worried, and Cam was just fired up. And even if he was nervous, he didn't let anybody know. He just sat there and said, Coach, well, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And he may have been lying a little bit to himself, but now that's what it takes to be a winner. Um, and Cam is a stud, man. He he came from Georgia, which is, you know, that's deep south, and deep south football is different. I mean, they, you know, in Carter County, it's kind of really special here, but you kind of go across the state in Tennessee, you're going to find a lot of counties that don't really – it's not a it's not a big thing to them, but in Georgia, places like that, it's a big thing everywhere you go. So Cam's a he's a stud. All right. Talk a little bit more about Gage. 
Gage. Gage McKinney and what you yeah. see and what you think that his strong points coming into this year and what he could do for the team. Yeah, Gage is, I don't even know where to start with Gage. Gage is smart, he's tall, he's athletic, he's hungry, he's mean, he's durable. I ran him like 48 times against Jackie Doak in a scrimmage. Nobody else ran the ball. We, a quarterback got hurt and we literally, we ran Gage 47 times and he's, he's just a stud. He, uh, Gage is really good at kind of being at ease all the time. So, you know, he never gets high, he never gets low. He's always just easy Gage. And I think that that, it's a good thing for his position because, you know, receiver and at safety, especially at safety, you know, if you're starting to get kind of wild-eyed and you're starting to, you know, your emotions are up and your emotions are down, it's kind of hard to be a leader, if that makes sense. Um, and Gage is he's just a good leader. I mean, in all facets, he, you know, I could talk about Gage forever. He's a good, good kid. Last one. His older brother was here, Birchfield, Kyle Birchfield. Yeah. What can you say about Kyle? Um, <clears throat> I told the assistants last week, I said, guys, I said, the best leader that we have as far as backs. Now, the best leader we have is a lineman, Silas Burleson, right now, as far as vocally. The best leader overall by how he carries himself day in and day out at practice and in scrimmages is Kyle. And that, that's not a knock on, on the rest of the kids, but every single day I see Kyle. It doesn't matter if he's had a bad day, if I've had a bad day, if he's had a great day, if he's had a horrible day and everybody else has had a great day. He's always the same. Hey, Coach, how you doing? You ready to have a good day of practice? Um, and the thing with Kyle is he respects his, his older brother, Seth, big time. Um, and he pushes himself, and it, you know, it almost makes me tear up thinking about it. He pushes himself to try to be as good as Seth um, to, a, uh, to a healthy point, you know, just that healthy competition, and it's, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. I mean, it, it's awesome to see because Kyle's a kid that I don't have to sit there and yell at Kyle, we got to be motivated, we got to do this. Kyle's going to be motivated. He's going to say, yes, sir. You ask him to go run through a brick wall and do 25 jumping jacks for no good reason and 50 up downs, he's going to say, yes, sir, coach, what else? He's just, he's that type of kid. And, you know, he's getting there as far as his athletic is said, mm -hmm. but he, man, he's got such a good attitude. I, I love him. He's a good kid for sure. So basically mentally, he's strong sound. Mentally, he's, yeah, mentally he's all there. And physically he's getting there. Um, the thing that Kyle has to do in order to be a better running back is, and it's something that only happens just by more experience running the ball, um, is getting better vision. And the thing is, his vision from early July until now is ridiculous. I mean, he's already starting to pick up on it, but he, he's a good kid. And he, the thing about Kyle is he pushes himself individually. You don't have to worry about making sure Kyle works hard. Kyle's gonna work hard because Kyle wants to work hard. And I think that's really, really important for sure. I appreciate it, Coach. Yeah, man.